from the book of, uh, he, uh, actually we'll go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. Amen. Luke 17 said, increase our faith. Hebrews 11 said, now faith is the substance of things not hoped for and the evidence of things not say, seen. The importance of faith is the next thing that we that I'd like to bring to our attention. Hebrews 11 and verse number 6 said, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's so important that we exercise to faith. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. I love you, Jesus. I praise your name, O oh God. I give glory and honor to you. I pray, God, that you would help us today, that we would be used of you even more. I thank you for your anointing that rests upon us here right now. I pray, O oh God, that you would minister to each life that is in this place. In the name of Jesus, uh, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. You may be seated. Don't want to keep you standing. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It is impossible to please Him. It's so important and vital that faith be alive and a part of our everyday life. I wonder if because certain people, I wonder if, if the reason that heart attacks happen are because people, and I know this to be a fact, is because people stop exercising. What is one of the things of advice that they tell a man to, to an individual that has problems with their heart? You need to exercise a man so that your heart will gain strength. If you'll walk, and uh, uh, I, everybody does things a little bit different. I walk at my store probably between uh, three and eight miles a day, and I thought that I was doing good until I picked up the jump rope. I really thought that I would show you that I could do something. And I did. I showed you that I couldn't handle but about 15 times. 14. I could have done the 15th if my feet hadn't slipped. <laughs> but you know what? Amen. If we don't develop and, 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 and work with our faith, if we don't exercise our faith, it, became, it becomes non-existent. It becomes almost as if it's dead. What was it James said? Because here's, here's, the, here's the whole catch. In James chapter 2 and verse number 18, Yea, a man, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. But he said, Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. If you believe that there is one God, you're doing good. He said, devil also believes and he trembles. He said, that's not really all that great a faith if you just believe there's one God. He said, because the devil has that kind of faith, he believes that God is one. He said, but you've got to develop a faith that will conquer the devil. You've got to step into a realm, amen, that you can understand, amen, that it's not just what you believe, but it's stepping into a realm, amen, of working and operating, amen, in that realm of faith, amen. But thou wilt, uh, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Do you see, if you will, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing it because he says, Seest thou how faith wrought with, with his works? And by works was, was faith made perfect. He, if we take it, he's saying, Amen. I am, I, uh, Abraham, heard the voice of God that said, Follow me. 
Amen. And, and God said, take your only son Isaac and offer him as a sacrifice. And Abraham, amen, as he's walking with Isaac, heading toward the mountain, when I read the scripture, he believed that God, if he offered him as a sacrifice, he believed that God would raise his son back to life. He just said, I don't know how God's going to do it. I just know that God has never failed me and God is not going to fail me this time. I've got a confidence in God that whatever God has asked me to do, I can move a mountain if God has asked me to do it. I can shake the earth if God has asked me to do it. I don't know what he'll want me to do next, but I'm believing that whatever God would have me to do, I'm going to exercise myself and operate in that realm of faith because I believe that God is going to help me out. He said his faith was made perfect, amen, because he said, come on, boy, we're going to worship. He didn't tell him why they were going to worship. He just said, we're going to worship. Yes. Amen. Yes. And he believed God that whatever happened on top of the mount, when he walked off the mount, he already believed as he looked at the servants in the eye and he said, the lad and I are going up to worship and the lad and I will return. He was saying, I don't know what's going to transpire, but I'm going to see something happen in the realm of faith. God is going to operate. God is going to show himself strong. I don't know what it's going to be, but when I leave the mountain, my son's going to be with me and I will see the super natural hand of God in operation. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed to him for righteousness. When he stepped into the realm of faith and operated in that realm, God said, I'm going to put righteousness upon you. Amen. Because you just believe me, and you don't question what I have to say. You just believe, amen, what my word says, and you're obeying it. Yeah. Oh, Hallelujah. And I'll bring you into just another step of righteousness. Amen. Whenever we obey the word of God. Amen. Somebody says, you have to believe that. It's in the Old Testament. Excuse me, it's still the book. <laughs> yeah. right. Amen. The reason that we believe, amen, this book. And the reason we separate ourselves from the world, amen, and the reason that we don't go some of the places the world goes and we don't say the things that the world says is because we believe, we have faith that this is more than just another black book, that this is more than just a book, amen, written by the hands of man, but this is the word of God. I have faith that this word is God's word and whatever it says I'm going to do. My wife was telling me this week about a man that is a, and I put it around quotes, a spiritual advisor to Oprah Winfrey. And she quoted one of the things that he said. She said, listen to what this says. He said that we no longer have to put our, our lives dependent upon the opinions of writers 2,000 years ago. <laughs> he said we no longer have to look at the at the New Testament and say that it it because what he what his what his whole preface preface for that was is that he said that homosexuality is not wrong. He said we're living in a different day and a different time. The last I checked <laughs> the Bible said though we are an angel from heaven come to you preaching any other gospel, counseling any other way than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. He said, this book, <laughs> hallelujah, the Bible, 
is not just one authority that we base among many authorities. But he said the book that I'm talking about, the word of God, is the final authority. Amen. Yes. What, if it's written in the book, I'm taking it to the bank because I know that this book will take me out of this world and into a world to come. I believe, I have faith, amen, in the word of God. I have a confidence that that which he has started in me, the same he will bring to a completion. I can't just take one of the scriptures of the word of God and say the Lord is my shepherd without saying he's the one that leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me, amen, through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. I've got to take the whole book. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, yes, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So he said, you see the faith is, is wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. Let's step over to Matthew chapter number 17. And they asked the Jesus, they said, now how come that we couldn't heal that boy? The boy brought to him that they couldn't, uh, they couldn't touch. And they said, how come we couldn't do it? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. He said, for verily I say unto you, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. In other words, what he was saying is, is he said, you saw that boy and you said, now I'm not sure if this is going to happen or not. And so you put it into your own realm. He said, but if you can develop your faith to the seed of a grain of mustard seed, if you can believe, amen, that mountain that stands in your life does not have to be in your life. God can remove that mountain and he can give you the miracle that you need. Hallelujah. He'll either give you the miracle of moving the mountain or the strength to go over the mountain. However he does it, it'll be in the power and the will of God. I've just got to believe that he'll take care of the mountain in his way. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In Romans chapter number, actually in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 33, I'm talking about the power of faith right now. Hebrews 11 and verse number 33. Amen. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the sword, edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. He said, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They looked, amen, Nebuchadnezzar in the eye, and they said, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, amen, I know there's only three of us, and I know there's a golden image, and I know what your command is, that if we don't bow, we're going into a fiery furnace. But Mr. King, we honor you as a political leader, but we reverence our spiritual God, and we have faith that God is able to either stop the fire or just deliver us from your hands. We believe that God is able to change things. They threw them into the fire and when they came out of the fire, the decree of the king had to change because when you have faith, amen, the king's word says, if you worship any other God than the one that I tell you to worship, will throw you into a, amen, into a fiery furnace. And now the king says, stop worshiping a golden image, but only serve the God of the three. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. It's because three men said, we just believe that God is able. Amen. They can change the king's commandment. Yes. They, can, they can subdue kingdoms. They can work in righteousness. And they can obtain promises. Two men looked at an entire nation and said, we are well able to go in and possess the land. Two men said, I know there's with 10 with us that said there's giants in the land, but we know a God that is more powerful 
and greater than, than what the giants are. Yes. Oh, yes. Let us go in at once. Oh, yes. And when the nation said, we can't do it. And Caleb and Joshua said, if you don't, I'm sorry for you. But whenever it comes time, 40 years later, I'll still be walking with God and I'll still believe Him that whatever He promised, He will fulfill. And 40 years later, give or take a few years from that and give a few more years beyond that. And Joshua and Caleb says to Joshua, do you remember the day whenever we stood on that mountain over there and I said, I want this? Well... Do you remember whenever we went back and Moses said, this is what God said, you will go in and possess? I told you then I wanted that mountain. I know that I'm 40 years older. I'm over 80 years old right now. And I'm not any weaker than I was at the time when I'm 40. Well, he was, he was, he was weaker in the flesh, but he wasn't weaker in the spirit. He might have he, he had a few more wrinkles at the age of 80. He might have had a few gray hairs. But there was something in his spirit that said, if you'll let me go conquer, well, hallelujah. I'm not asking you to fight and wipe them out. You just let me at them. And let's watch what God can do. That's a man of faith. That's a man that says it was promised to me 40 years ago and I'm going to obtain what God has promised to me. Give me my mountain. It's a man that was operating and developing his faith. I think every day that he went to bed, every night when he went to bed, he was saying I'm one night closer. Amen. To the time whenever I'm going to conquer my mountain. I know there's giants there. I know there's great I know there's going to be battles, but I also know there's a victory waiting for me. And there's a and there's a plant that's waiting for me. I know that there's grapes waiting for me. I know there's a harvest waiting for me. He obtained, obtained promises and stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fear, the violence of fire, and escaped the edge of the sword, stopped the mouth of lions. Amen. Daniel, I know that you're talked about an awful lot, but it's okay to be able to say, it's okay, Darius. They can throw me in, but I serve God. And while the king is busy worrying all night and fasting for the first time in his life, <laughs> and he's doing what we talked about, he's the man that comes in and says, I ain't never done this before. But I'm getting ready to fast, and I'm getting ready to pray. And all that night, the king was trying to develop, and he said, I don't know how to do this. I ain't never done this before. But old Daniel said, oh, this is part of my everyday life. I do this all the time. So when I walk into the den of lions, it's not a big deal, because I'm developing. I have already developed my strength. When I walk into that den of lions, I just have a confidence. I'm walking out. Because I've developed my strength. And the king walked out and said, Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God. Oh, Daniel, tell me, are you still alive? I, I, I don't know how to operate in the realm that you're operating in. I've never been to the place that you've been. And Daniel said, Oh, king, don't worry about a thing. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, has stopped the mouth of the lions. Yeah. What I'm talking about is whenever you develop it, amen, before the lion's den, whenever the lion's den comes, you can have the faith to walk through the lion's den. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He's the same God today as He was back then. And if we will develop our faith and work and exercise our faith the way that, that Daniel operated in the realm of faith, amen, it will come to pass and God will bring the victory. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So Romans chapter number 10, amen, and verse number 17, excuse me, Romans 10 and verse number 17, 
gives us the way that faith comes. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's so important. Amen. And I'm preaching to the choir right now. But that's why it's so important we be in the house of God. Because faith comes whenever we hear that God has done something great. Oh, hallelujah. If I came in here and said, you know what? I was suffering with a, with, with a headache and I prayed and nothing happened. You'd look at me and you'd say, you're crazy. But if I came in here and said, you know, I was praying this week and I was, and I was walking through a, a dark time in my life and God healed me and God gave me the direction that I need. You know what that does? That develops your faith as I'm telling you. And the reason that we gather together is because when we get together, let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. The Lord of all supreme throughout eternity. The great I... Hallelujah. Have you got any rivers that you think are uncrossable? Have you got any mountains that you can't tunnel through? God specializes. God, I'm so tired. I don't know if I can make it another day. In things thought impossible. He can do what others cannot do. Hallelujah. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Do you see him? Hallelujah. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your hearts cry. You know what? I've never seen him, but I've seen him in action. As we have begun to develop our faith and we begin to worship. And most times, amen, I'm talking to, to us today. Most times when we started worshiping, when we started praising, we weren't feeling anything. When we started worshiping, amen, when we started clapping, when we started singing, we were doing it because we've been around the block long enough to know that if I'll start worshiping God, I will feel His presence. Oh, hallelujah. I listened to one preacher say, let's clap our hands Amen. And then every time that he starts preaching, amen, this preacher will start, let's clap our hands unto the Lord because he's here. Can I tell you, even though that man is a very spiritual man, I'm confident there's times whenever he stepped to the pulpit and as he stepped to the pulpit, he didn't feel the anointing. And as he said, let's clap our hands because God is here, he was speaking in faith rather than in feeling. Because we're all the same. We're made of the same type of stuff. We got the same type of flesh. But he has a confidence if we start clapping our hands and if we start praising his name, what you don't feel, you will feel. Amen. When you start getting, amen, into his presence, what you, uh, what you need right now, amen, and what you're going to get right now, amen, is a blessing from God because you're transferring that faith into an act Action, and you're letting God have his way within your life. Oh, hallelujah. It's the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise your name, oh God. I give you, Lord, the glory and the honor. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It's more than an excuse whenever we say, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We are not using that as an excuse. We are using that as a promise and saying, He is here. And because He is here, anything is possible. What am I doing? I'm reaching down to faith and saying, I can do all things through Christ with strength and with me. I'm developing myself spiritually. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 H
In Mark, in Mark chapter 5 and verse number 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, yes. hallelujah, faith cometh by hearing. Hallelujah. And hearing by the word of God. Let me tell you what Jesus can do. Hallelujah. He can take an issue of blood and he can heal it. And when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, Hallelujah. I'm going to develop my faith. If I can but touch just the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. She said, I, I just have this confidence. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know this much there's going to be a transfer of power when I touch Jesus amen Jesus is going to touch me I know that whenever he whenever I get close to him he'll get close to me I know that if I can just get amen in the presence of Jesus everything's going to be all right every problem that I have is going to vanish hallelujah you know what she was doing she was developing amen a faith that said anything is possible for me I need my mountain removed I need my miracle. I need God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number 8. Amen. And verse number 5. And when Jesus had entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy and grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He said, look, Jesus, I'm just going to explain something to you. I know how authority works. And I know that you have more authority than what I do. I'm coming to you. Amen. Requesting your authority in this circumstance. You don't even have to come to the house. I know that you have the authority. Hallelujah. To speak the word. Amen. While you're standing here and the word of your authority will reach to the, to reach to the sickness and the torment of my servant that's laying over there. I have enough faith to believe. Amen. That your authority is greater than my authority hallelujah and whatever i need from you right now you will do it you know what he's doing he was saying i'm developing some faith i'm developing in a place i'm believing that whatever whenever god just starts speaking things are going to start happening i don't know how i'm not going to try to explain how it's going to happen i'm just going to say god you're god and you're in control you could speak worlds into existence amen without breaking into a sweat and what little problem that i have right now you can say to me hallelujah go and i'll go and whenever I get to the place where, I, where my miracle is needed, I'll find that it's already been done. Oh, hallelujah. Last place that we'll go today. Man. Well, babe, you were right. There's too many notes. <laughs> hallelujah. We're going to be, I guess we'll be preaching for several weeks on exercise and godliness. <laughs> The last place that we're going to go today is Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 22. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Lady, please don't bother me. I, I, I've got bigger and better things to do. Lady, I, uh, I know that you've got a need, but uh, from what I'm going to let you hear, I, I know that everybody else is going to think that I don't love you whenever I say this, but lady, I'm just going to stretch your faith a little bit. If I would have spoken the minute you said, have mercy on me and said, what do you need? You'd had a faith about this big. I'm going to let you work on your faith because I've got, a, I've got an object lesson that I need to teach to my disciples because their faith isn't quite there yet. Yeah. Lady, I've been sent to the lost house of Israel. Uh, go ahead. Dwell on that for a minute and I'm going to just keep on teaching. You just think about that. Guys, did you hear what I said? I said I don't have time for your, for your miracle right now. Lady, you just keep on dwelling on it because I know just in a minute your face going to develop a little bit more than what it has before. Yes. You're going to continue to increase in your faith. Yes. Thank God. She, he said, maybe you didn't hear me, ma'am. According to my culture, you're nothing but a dog. Ma'am, I, I want you to understand that according to my culture, Everybody else thinks that you really don't deserve anything from me. And Jesus finished off and he said, I can't wait for what's getting ready to happen. Yeah. <laughs> because I know a lady that ain't going to give up just because I said, you're not of the right race. Yeah. And she ain't going to give up just because I called her a dog. But she's going to keep on and say, yes, Lord. <laughs> But even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. She, she said, Jesus, I know how big of a miracle this is to you. It ain't nothing but a breadcrumb. Oh, I know they think that it's going to be big stuff whenever you run a few devils off out of my household. But I know you better than that. I believe that that, that that amount of devils and the torment that my daughter is under ain't nothing but just a few crumbs that they would even, they'd pass up because it was, it was, it was under them. If you'll just give me a crumb, I'll be happy with that because I believe the crumb that you have is bigger Oh, hallelujah. That anything that anybody else can ever do for Amen. me. You know what she was saying? She was saying, I've developed my faith to a point that I believe that God, hallelujah, is able to do greater things than I've ever seen in my life. All I've done is heard what He's done. I've never seen it happen in my life. I've never seen Him operate in my life. I've never seen anything. All I've known about Jesus is what I've heard from those that have come my direction. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I just heard that he was a miracle worker. I just heard that he's a deliverer. I just heard that he has all power. And I'm believing that what my need is, is not any problem for him. He won't break into a sweat. Hallelujah. But there's something great he's getting ready to do in my life. And it's going to be nothing at all to him. It's nothing but a breadcrumb. And Jesus said, I ain't never seen so great. Listen, guys, I want you to hear what she just said because I, I want you to write it down and understand this isn't a problem for me. This isn't big for me. I'm greater than any problem. I'm greater than any sickness. I'm greater than any circumstance. You want your faith increased, disciples? Listen to what she says and understand there's nothing to hard for. Oh, hallelujah. So, I go to the spiritual gym this week. And as I'm going to the spiritual gym, I'm looking for the ways that God can operate. I wonder if God's big enough to touch that person that I see hurting. I wonder if God is big enough to reach to my family that's lost. I wonder if God has enough power to give me a Bible study this week. I wonder if God is able to do exceeding abundant above all that I can ask or think in my life. I'm going into the gym and I'm going to take the word of God and I'm going to say, God, you've never failed me. 
and I'm going to develop in the realm of faith. I'm going to strengthen myself so that muscles that have grown weak from misuse and no use will begin to develop. I'll pick up the weights again and I'm going to try again. I look at the life of Samson. And Samson was able to take just the dog, jawbone of a donkey and slay Philistines. He was able to take the doors or the gates of a city and pick them up and carry them up and set them on top of a mountain. He was able to do some great things. Tie him up and, and he was able to break the things that tied him. He lost it somewhere along the way. But there came a time whenever he came back. And he said, God, I know that I can't pull down pillars. But I know what power you have. If you will be with me one more time. If you'll help me one more time. I know that greater things than I've ever done in my past can be done in my present. And he grabbed a hold of the pillars. And the Bible said that he slew more in his death than he did in his life. You know what he had done at that grist mill? He said, it's really not Samson that does this stuff. Samson knows how to catch foxes and tie their tails together. But Samson doesn't know how to have a great victory. But if I can let God be God in my life. If I can let him be God. So while some looked at it and said, he's nothing but a failure. He died. Amen. After having his eyes put out. Hebrew said. <clears throat> and I don't have time to talk about Samson. I ain't got time to talk about him. But if I wanted to talk about his faith, I could tell you about a man that reached out to pillars and said, I can't do it by myself, God. But if you give me the strength right now, I can tear down a building and I can slay thousands of people and I can get a victory. And God, hallelujah, has called us to a place where we can develop ourselves and exercise unto godliness. Praise God. Yes. Let's stand together today and let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise I love you, Jesus. Jesus. I praise Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Holy God. We give you our praise and worship. Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray, oh God, that I will go back every month. Hallelujah to the exercise. There's nothing, oh, nothing, nothing that my, my God, God can do.
godliness is profitable unto all things. It's a tremendous profit. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. And I really feel that that's an important part. It's not only good for us right here, but it's important in the life to come. It's the thing that will take us from this life into the life to come. And so he says, exercise yourself unto godliness. Exercise yourself unto godliness. When the Lord comes, will he find faith on the earth? Exercise thyself unto godliness. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. I thank God for his word.